Do you find it difficult to accept your own reality? And are you experiencing negative thoughts about your own existence? I used to experience this for about 10 years with the mental health issues like depersonalization disorder, as well as high levels of anxiety and depression, and also maladaptive daydreaming. And thankfully, I've completely overcome this issue. And specifically with depersonalization disorder, one of the major symptoms that people can experience is this constant existential fear because depersonalization disorder specifically makes it feel like you're living in a dream non-stop and you'll see from my other videos where I go into more detail about this I'll put a link up here and in the description if you want to know more but when you are experiencing these existential thoughts when you keep questioning your reality because you're experiencing life as though it's a non-stop dream this honestly becomes terrifying so 10 years ago when I was experiencing this, one of the major symptoms was existential fear that comes from those thoughts. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with existential fear. So before we begin, please remember, I am not a mental health professional. These videos are based on my own experiences and my own research. You should always use your discernment and speak to a medical professional before trying anything that I discuss. And of course, this shouldn't be used as a way to diagnose yourself and it shouldn't be used as a replacement for professional medical and mental health help. Firstly, what exactly is existential fear? So when you experience something like depersonalization disorder, uh, specifically one of the symptoms that people can have is derealization. This is when your perception of your external world, so your perception of reality, is so distorted that things appear like they're like you're in a dream. You feel as though and you're perceiving reality as though you were dreaming except you're not actually dreaming, you're fully awake. So this of course can be terrifying because nothing feels real and when I say you experience things as though it's a dream, it's not just a feeling, it is you are literally perceiving things like you are dreaming. And so this means what you are seeing, what you are hearing, what you are tasting, you feel disconnected from. So you can understand when you're first experiencing this, and even if you start to get used to it, your mind is going to constantly be questioning things, even if you logically understand it. And this leads to what I would call, what can lead to an obsession with understanding the nature of reality and questioning the nature of reality and also questioning the nature of yourself because part of depersonalization disorder is often for people like what I experienced. You ex also experience a disconnection from yourself. So when you see your own body, when you see your own reflection, it also appears completely unreal. So you don't even feel connected to your body and you don't feel connected to reality. So you can imagine how terrifying that is. Of course, there is nothing inherently wrong with questioning reality or questioning your own existence. I think it's a healthy thing to do in the right way. I think everybody at some point will do this, and if they haven't, you should be, but in a healthy way. The reason why it becomes unhealthy with depersonalization disorder and similar issues is because it becomes an obsession and it doesn't actually lead to anything productive. It just fuels anxiety, depression and other issues. So that is what existential fear is. It is the fear of your own existence and your own reality. So what's actually going on in the mind of somebody who's experiencing this? So you will look at the symptoms you're experiencing and because it's scary and because you can't fully understand and comprehend what's going on, your mind starts generating thoughts constantly about what is going on and with the non-stop questioning. And this is what leads to the high levels of anxiety. So for example, thoughts like, am I even real? Is this even real? Do I exist? Why do things look this way? How do I know if I'm real? Can I prove I'm real? These, these kind of very deep existential thoughts, except they don't actually lead to anywhere, they just make things worse. And then the more and more you become obsessed with these thoughts and fuel them and you feed them, the more stress and anxiety it creates. And you'll see from other videos, all this does is just, it just fuels the symptoms even further. So then you create more depersonalization symptoms and that becomes this endless loop until you learn how to break it. Because your perception of reality can be so altered and distorted, your mind keeps trying to find answers. And this is part of the core of the issue where 
either your mind or you are directly using your mind to try and solve a problem you cannot solve because you cannot actually solve this problem with just your mind. We can't actually think our way out of depersonalization disorder. There's more going on. So you end up overthinking and this just creates more stress and anxiety. So at the very core of the issue of depersonalization disorder, I believe this is all rooted in a hypersensitive nervous system and mind due to chronic stress and past trauma. And you'll see my other videos and you'll see in the link in the description, a link up here where I go further into this. So when you have a hypersensitive nervous system and mind, eventually I believe that as a way to cope with this overwhelming stress, your mind will disconnect. So there is the fight and flight response that your nervous system has with the sympathetic nervous system. And there is a third response it has, which is the freeze response. So if you cannot fight a perceived threat and you cannot run away, then the only thing to do is the freeze response as it's known. And so to freeze, you'll see in the wild, for example, if there's like a deer that tries to run away from a predator, and if it can't run away, you'll see they play dead. That's the freeze response. That's the only last resort they have, which is they pretend to be dead in the hope that the predator, let's say the lion, decides, oh, this, I don't want this anymore, it's dead, I actually want to eat it alive. As, as an example, that's the actual freeze response occurring in an animal. But with humans, we don't necessarily have that as a response. So one of the responses we have is dissociation. And dissociation can come in many forms. And one of the forms is to experience a dissociation from your body and from your reality. Because this way, if it doesn't seem real, then this is a way to cope with the stress. This is a way to cope with the unresolved trauma. There are examples of people who have had, let's say they're in disaster situation or in accidents, and they have said for some reason they felt completely calm about the situation, they didn't feel real. That is the freeze response in action. It's actually very useful in that situation. But of course, if we cannot resolve the issue, then we stay stuck in that freeze response. If the stress is built up for so long or if the trauma is unresolved and we don't have a way to release the stress or to release the trauma, then this freeze response stays as a protective mechanism. And so at its core, the main issue is from a physical level, our nervous system is hypersensitive, yes. And psychologically, our mind is perceiving things to be more threatening than they actually are. And so what we have to do on a psychological level is to accept the symptoms as they are. And I know that sounds strange, but we have to learn to accept and to practice accepting that it is our perception that has changed, not reality itself. We need to retrain ourselves to let things be, so to not resist the situation, because when we keep questioning things over and over and over again, when we allow our mind to continue to produce these kind of thoughts, we're actually not we're not mentally accepting the situation as it is, we are resisting it. And when I say that we let things be, I don't mean that we give up, that's a completely different thing. By letting things be, we're actually taking an important step in accepting it. And by accepting it, we're taking the step to resolve the issue. So we're not actually giving up, we're taking steps to get better. I like to think of it as if you had, let's say, a really, let's say you had an injury on your hand or your arm and it was very itchy and you were told if you keep itching it it's going to get worse so you have to leave it and although it itches you really want to itch it if you keep itching it on some level it shows you're not really accepting that the actual wound is there you're resisting it being there you're resisting it healing but if you let it be you let your body do its thing as long as the body doesn't have anything stopping it from getting in the way of healing it will heal that's just that's just a metaphor for how I like to view the way of accepting the symptoms. I know it's not exactly the same to compare the psychological and the physical uh, issues, but, but it's very similar in that way. And the first step to accepting the symptoms as they are is to learn what you can about the symptoms. So learn why they are happening in the first place, because a lot, of, like, honestly, half of the fear for me came from just not knowing what was going on because that's then when the mind keeps trying to come up with possible reasons for why it's happening and then because you're in that fight flight freeze response state where everything looks like a threat 
your mind ends up coming up with the worst case scenarios as to what's going on and it doesn't help anyone. So I highly recommend you don't only just check out my own videos, but look at what professionals say about depersonalization disorder and you'll see how much of it is rooted in a hyperactive nervous system and your mind being stuck in that hypervigilant state. And once you understand more about what is going on, you'll find you're more likely to relax about the situation a bit more because you can see people do know about this. There is a very logical explanation for it. And not only that, there are many people who do not just get better, but do fully recover like myself. And the next thing to do to deal with existential fear is you have to recognize that a huge part of this is that so many of us still believe that we are our mind and we actually believe that we are our thoughts. So we regain our sense of identity still from our thoughts. So what that means is a thoughts come in our mind and we often just immediately believe what it's saying is true. Even if we stop and think about it, you'll see many of our thoughts are not accurate or true. A lot of what we do, a lot of how we make decisions is that we reason by assumption and comparison. And so you'll see one of the things we've done here is we've just made an assumption that thoughts that come in our head must be true or that we must take them completely seriously instead of questioning them. We then need to train ourselves to objectively and neutrally observe our thoughts and our thinking so that we don't automatically take them 100% seriously and that we don't completely believe them straight away. And when we do this with practice, we can start reducing the existential fear because we're not taking what our mind is saying so seriously. The less you feed those thoughts, the less that you believe them, the less you focus on the existential thoughts, the less you are feeding them. And so over time, they go away and they weaken. Thoughts become stronger the more we pay attention to them. One thing you can do, what I used to do is, when I used to get those kind of existential thoughts like, oh no, what if this isn't real? What if I can't, what if I can't live a normal life because life isn't real or something like that? I would, I would purposely see that as, well, this is an opinion being given by my mind. It's not a definitive truth. So then I would remind myself, this is just my perception. So the repetition of reminding myself over and over again. So when those thoughts would come in, I would reckon, I would train myself to recognize, okay, this is an existential thought that's going to lead to fear. And I shift my attention to a thought that's more useful. So for example, this is just my perception. I understand that this is just my body and mind. They've shifted into a different state. So this is why I am perceiving reality as it is those kind of thoughts. So the repetition is important. You can also remind yourself, is, is this true? Is this thought true? Do I need to believe this right now? Is there a more useful thought I can think? Those are the kind of things that can get you to remind yourself not to immediately believe those kind of thoughts. Doing this, you'll recognize that this is entirely about not necessarily even having those thoughts. We, it takes a long time to properly train our mind to not have certain types of thoughts. So you'll see it's more about the relationship that we have with our thoughts and it's more about the relationship we have with our mind. That's really what we're changing. We're not necessarily changing thoughts because that takes a long time. You change your relationship to your mind and to your thoughts. And the more you do this, the more you can accept that your mind and your body, your perception is currently this way, that currently this is the distorted perception you're experiencing. And then you start to understand your mind and the more you understand your mind and your thoughts, the less you fear it and the more you're accepting it. The next thing we can do is to find ways to accept the situation as it is by finding small things every day that you can approve of and you can find acceptable about your life situation. And I fully understand that when you have depersonalization disorder symptoms that are very strong in particular, this can be a difficult thing to do because when you go to look for something that you can appreciate or find acceptable, what you are looking at ultimately doesn't look real. So, so that can be difficult to, to deal with, but even just finding literally the tiniest of things you can find appreciation for, like, well, okay, if this is what I'm experiencing, I like the colors I'm seeing, or I can hear something, maybe this music or this 
noise doesn't doesn't sound particularly real at the moment, but I can still somewhat enjoy it a little bit, even if let's say because of one of the symptoms is the feeling disconnected from things. What I remember was I was still able to up to a certain point enjoy the things I used to enjoy. Maybe not fully, but I would focus at least on the small amounts of things that I could enjoy. So I was bringing my attention away from the things that I couldn't immediately change. And I was focusing on the things that I could enjoy. So I was changing where my attention was going. So the consistent practice of finding small things every day you can appreciate and things that you can enjoy, even if it's small, the more and more you practice this, you're, what you are doing is finding ways to accept the situation as it is. You're finding ways to accept your present reality. And so you are reducing the fear of what's going on. Because when you keep fueling that situation, when you keep fueling the existential fear, then you're only going to make it worse. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, you thought it was useful, remember to click the like button and subscribe for more content. And let me know in the comments, how do you experience existential fear? Have you done other things that have helped you to overcome this? Let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.